ahead and get started. Good morning, everyone. Thank you again for joining us. My name is Emily Cantrell, and I'm the director here at World Trade Center Seattle. This is the Hall in America line room that you see behind me. Our physical operations are suspended during this time, but we are continuing with our mission of bringing leaders together through virtual programming. And this is part of our series called Navigating Business in Times of Crisis. Welcome to our panelists, Josh Dirks, Anna Choi, and Eben Green. We know how many webinars and virtual programs are out there, so we really want to make this hour worth your while. We are recording this webinar, so if you have to leave early or want to share this with anyone, we will make it available later on today. The next 40 minutes or so will be spent on a moderated discussion, and then we will end with Q&A. So today's topic is Full Team Ahead. Joining us in alphabetical order, we have Anna Choi, who works to empower the next generation of global leaders to focus their energy, leverage their genius, and find peace in chaos. Josh Dirks lives on the bleeding edge of technology and digital marketing. Unfortunately, GoToWebinar does not play nice with virtual backgrounds, so you are looking at his <laughs> screen. In 2009, Josh founded one of the first social media only creative agencies in the US, Project Bionic, and as CEO, he helps clients across the world with all things social media. And we have Eben Green, president of Shift Up. Eben is passionate about transformative change, and his clients include AT&T, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Microsoft, and Washington State Ferries. Thank you to our speakers for making this program possible today. So before we get started, we are going to open up a poll. And just to warn everyone, normally we do these webinars in Zoom. So this is the first time that we are trying this in GoToWebinar. So there will be three questions. Go ahead and answer. And while we're doing that, we're going to start with a little lightning round, a couple questions for our panelists. Josh, let's start with you. What are one or two habits you've picked up during the stay at home order? Yeah, I think it's been an interesting time to kind of think about how you kind of navigate. I know for me, it's, you know, really the emphasis on the morning time and just getting up and getting going and getting a sense of normalcy. And my day has been really, really important. Um, second of that, I think that it's been a lot more important to reach out to other business owners and leaders. So I've been trying to go ahead and just kind of make rounds with two or three business owners um, every day mm -hmm. and just checking in on people, getting people's temperature, understanding what they're facing um, and really just trying to be empathetic and offer any help that we can um, as an organization. But really just more just showing people that you care and that you're thinking about them and really trying to think about their business and their teams and they're in this moment. And Anna, how about you? Yeah, for um, me, it's been looking at building community more online. I uh, Before it was more, you know, we were all rushed and trying to fit stuff and meet people. And at this point, it's been really critical. Uh, we've been using Facebook, but really nurturing and creating social things, not just business stuff on our community of conscious entrepreneurs and polling them and, and seeing how they're doing. So that's before. Uh, priority that's come up and then personally just like I've been kayaking and baking bread <laughs> which have been goals of mine I've never been able to do so that's been awesome lots of bread baking and before we go to Eben just let everyone know we're going to switch to another poll now and Eben what are one or two new habits that you have picked up uh, so embracing the online zoom world uh, setting up happy hours doing events like this and just trying to be present and connected uh, to help people during this time. So it's just more of a habit of reaching out and bringing people together, something I was doing before, but just kind of uh, this this current, you know, this lockdown the last two and a half, almost three months has, has put me in a position of kind of railing the troops, so to speak, and bringing people together. On a personal level, I've lived by GreenLink, so I've been walking every, every day, and that's been uh, one of the rituals but try to get some other you know exercise and yard work and time with my kids in uh and try to keep things as normal as possible which i know we're all trying to figure out what that's like but uh regular walks around green lake always help sounds wonderful and then second question and as we hear the answers to this we will ask the third and final question in the poll and josh will start with you again tell us what resilience means to you 
resilience is you know the ability to to take in a lot and to understand and to get to a point where you're not blaming that you're working with what you're given and working within the means you have of your control uh, to find solutions to push things forward. I think that, you know, I've marveled at the resilience of a lot of brands and a lot of companies that, you know, have, have made transitions in this moment. And I, you know, continue to be, you know, super interested in watching how, you know, organizations are changing and, and morphing right now to find those solutions and how they continue to be resilient in this moment. Thank you. Anna? I cheated. I looked it up. <laughs> it is the, anyway, but I do think it's the capacity to really overcome um, these challenges and return your body. This is my spin on it, right, from Webster, is uh, return your bi body, mind, and spirit and heart to a place of um, grounded peace and energy. So uh, you can have the capacity to really deal with any challenges and conflicts coming your way. Thank you. And Evan, how about you? What does resilience mean to you? Uh, taking a, an abundant mindset to how you approach and solve problems, similar to what Anna and Josh were saying, but high level of flexibility and being open to uh, the possibilities, but being grounded in the responsibilities uh, as well, so that you can find balance in your response. Um, and this has tested a lot of our humanness uh, during this time so to be humble, but at the same time, uh, keep trust and the way, way we interact with people uh, at, at the forefront of how we, how we respond to business or even with our family. So you gotta be very adaptable. Thank you for that. So let's take a quick look at the poll results just so we can learn a little bit about our attendees joining us today. So as far as which phase is applicable to your organization, it looks like most of us are in phase one. And then um, I apologize that this is not as smooth as it should be, and I know we're hopping back and forth between the screens. If anyone has tips, please feel free to reach out to me after. So it looks like the majority of people are planning on returning to a physical workspace with a, a good number of people also planning on doing it in stages and transitioning. And then finally, for the third question, which is regarding the biggest concern, as we return to the workplace, it looks like it's split half and half between protective measures and then also proper communication. So this is perfect. We'll be touching on all of this today. So thank you to everyone for filling out that poll and uh, sharing your thoughts with us. So one thing that is certain about COVID-19 is that it has changed the way that we work. And now as the stay at home orders are beginning to lift and employers are planning to move back into their physical workspace, there's a big question about how do you resume operations after so many months of uncertainty? So Evan, let's start with you. Can you spend the next several minutes walking us through a few of your slides and giving us a very high level overview of what returning to work might look like? Yeah, so um, I've been working with this theme, this idea uh, where people are actually having a bit of a fear of the return. And it's not so much that, you know, obviously there's concerns, health concerns, and, and today and we're not going to cover all the different safety things like protocols or, you know, how to maintain your mental health and, and things like that, which have been topics you've covered before. But it's really just acceptance of the the uncertainty and how to plan accordingly without quite knowing what that's going to look like <clears throat> and so in this process uh, rebuilding trust with your team your brand your uh, customers is a key part of it and then creating that psychological safety as well as the physical safety for people to feel comfortable in their workspace and finding the, the way to balance um, kind of the current state which some people are feeling. I mean, it's, for many, this has certainly not been a snow day, but it's, it's definitely changed our mindset. You know, when you go out in public, there's, there's very little interaction and, and we're distancing ourselves. So we have to start to think about a new desired state. And, you know, this this slide is is kind of summing it up to the, to the large degree, but it's really around trust and safety. And so the emotional challenge of change of kind of where we're at and kind of put this document together actually before all this happened for a client of mine, I thought it was very fitting. But we're kind of in this space um, 
where we're still trying to figure out that we can do it. So many many of us have obviously adapted. We've done moved things online. We've kind of adjusted. Some companies have kind of continued forward. If you're maybe a nonprofit or you, we've helped nonprofits like do their fundraising. So we've made adjustments in the last few months. So now we're kind of going into that keep going and kind of a readjustment to the new normal. So in the context of thinking about this and to be brief on the slides so we can hear more about the discussion, it's shifting from a today, like what do I need to do just today to get by to planning for and starting to think about tomorrow. And so beginning with the end in mind, is really challenging because we don't necessarily know what what some of those things might be we are very aware that there will likely be another spike or uh, the, the curve may level out and then there may be some more interesting instances of how this all affects us we have to go into lockdown again so it's it's challenging where most people are stressed and stuck at that what that beginning the end in mind is going to look like so with that in the the balance of whether you're working from home or a balance of some people working from home in the office you're going to make a lot of the changes so the things you see maybe at the grocery store are going to be applied to your office if you have people coming into your your place maybe you have a hotel or hospitality of some sort all those things are going to need to be clearly communicated as to what you're doing so the mind shift shift is really around we we did learn how to respond we all now have masks we have hand sanitizer hopefully enough toilet paper and all the things that we've gone through but going through and looking at this uh slide in the in the high level we're less about inward looking and we're starting to look at the market and what do people need and so that's why the panel of, of folks that are here today are really great because we'll get to take a look at how we're going to to start to uh re-engage in business and kind of move from this crisis management to like managing programs or offerings and and kind of find our way to be relevant again so it's really changing from reacting to reinventing and so that's all about building trust and so in the physical sense you obviously need to have your your space and your personal uh sa the safety of your employees in top of mind but also some of the different things about your cash flow and where you're going to be and how you can kind of move your business forward to the right sizing or upskilling that you might need to do for folks. And technology, Zoom, or GoToMeeting are very much a part of our new world. And so having that sense of, you know, building trust and, and how to energize and be more connected when we are using these platforms. We're still getting it figured out, but there's a long way to go of how we can stay more connected, even if we are more in a virtual mode. So real quickly, at the high level, we want to get clear as people are thinking about their team, um, not just on, you, you know, finding this as an opportunity to, to grow forward, to really get clear on what your vision or your purpose is, how you're relevant, and try to make what you're doing as in demand in this new economy as possible. And so that may be adjusting how you price things or offering some, you know, assurances. Um, different things that are listed here cash flow plan how you communicate your value how you also uh, do some change management to kind of shift things up and let people know internally and externally we all started this where everyone and, and that we ever worked with was sending us their covid response or their update and we're now going to see lots of emails saying we're open or come visit us or some some next level of what's accepted and so when it's all happening at the same time it's just important to make sure you're as e easy to access as possible. But looking at new markets, how to be innovative. And so while this is a, a lot to take in as a slide, this is something I took on as a challenge just to simplify. And of course, people will have access to this and other slides that I can put together to help kind of guide the process. We have a bunch of information about, you know, how to set up offices or workspaces with uh, social distancing and all those things. But this is really the crux of what this panel is about is like, how do you transform, make the shifts, how do you support your team, and how do you engage? But at the high level, ultimately what we're trying to do is build trust, bring safety, and then ultimately find some way to grow and to energize the path forward. So we'll talk more about that in the panel. We'll move it over to Anna. Uh, yeah, and thank you, cool. Evan. So Anna, you know, we just heard everything that Evan said about going from reacting to reinventing and building trust and safety. We have some amazing leaders on this uh, webinar right now, for, representing nonprofits, tourism attractions, wineries, so a very wide, um, diverse audience. What can these leaders do to support their teams during this transition? 
Great. Yes. So there are so many things. Um, the primary three places as a leader that you can really ground your energy and reclaim your energy is in these the mind, body, and the emotion. And those areas actually reside within your body. So right here in your mind, your pineal gland, that part of your brain, um, is what is responsible for directing a lot of the different emotions that happen in your body of how you're able to be resilient. Um, then you're in your heart, your emotion, that area is another place where energy can gather. So when you do your acupuncture and so forth, there's they're tapping into different channels there. And then your body or your um, core, right, where we birth life, that area is very uh, critical um, to maintain as a leader being grounded. So I'm kind of looking at three different ways. Like when you're a Navy SEAL under a lot of pressure and chaos, you've got to keep your cool. Uh, breath is the very first thing that you have to learn. So they do what's called a box breath where you can inhale for four seconds, hold for four seconds, exhale for four seconds, and then hold it down there for four seconds. And when you're able to even just breathe properly, most of us don't know how to breathe. <laughs> that makes a huge difference. And then um, on the heart side, I'm still on the other slide, um, is being able to really feel your emotions, which is what we're going to go more in depth to on the next slide. And then the last thing is with your mind and being able to um, have uh, ask the right questions and listen, which will be critical. And Josh will go more in detail about that. Um, but being able to uh, communicate is starts first with listening. And now more than ever, because everyone's in a more rocky place, you have to be able to ask the questions that have people feel trust and safety and then um, draw out what's really going on for them so that you can work together better as a team more strongly. Next slide. And so this is just a model I've been using with clients um, for a while. I work primarily with, with smaller businesses or small businesses, um, teams of like five, five, ten or so. But uh, here you have, it's an acronym. <laughs> So you can see, uh, so add more yin to your yang. Now more than ever, we really have to double down on what I call yin time. Prior to this whole pandemic, we have been in super yang culture, hustle, hustle, go, go, grind. Um, there was no backstop to that. And then there was a forced backstop. And so now that as we re-enter, it's critical that you, uh, it's not gonna go right back to that same pace, but they're able to build into your day uh, yin time. So whether that's, um, staycations at times since you can't travel or more on a micro level day to day where you're maybe making sure you do yoga every day instead of just twice a week or you have an extended morning time ritual that makes sure you're grounded is, is super critical so that you can digest uh, more data and, and um, uh, circumstances that will be happening to, not just to you but to all your clients and that you collectively can feel. Um, the second is listen within and so this is really looking at oh go back Oh, yeah. Uh, is really, again, there's different ways that you can make decisions during this time. So just a really quick, this is um, like the yes, yes, hell no method. And when you're having to make constant decisions right now, I mean, in your consumer life of like, do I want to go to a restaurant or not? Even if it opens up to phase two or, <laughs> or lunch, right? Or, you know, what can I, can I do? Um, you can first check your intuition or gut. And then you can check your logic. And if you get a yes, yes there, but then you get a hell no from your fear, that's the third advisor, so to speak, that can sometimes still indicate that you should move forward. It's a growth area, as opposed to completely revert back to the survival mindset, just because you get a really hard no. But if it's yes, yes, hell no, that actually means move forward. Um, so that's just a quick tool you can use. Um, invest in you first. This is looking at, uh, gotta put the oxygen mask on you first before you can really help others. So. Uh, what, whatever those practices are for you will be different for each person and for each leader, but uh, doing the work to make sure that you've got that time set aside um, rather than just totally out focusing to your team is critical. Uh, number four, or not four, but V is vanquish your fears. And um, if we had more time, I'd give you examples and so forth, but I'm just giving a high level right now. So uh, rather than avoid the hard, comfortable situations, you need to face them head on. And what that could look like um, is, especially I think with emotional resilience is the big keyword here and how as a leader do you lead out a crisis? Um, you know, there's just fears and grief, you know, people are dealing with passing away and in different ways and 
um, anger, frustration, all those things. So all those unwanted emotions, there are ways that you can um, actually embrace and face them. Uh, I don't think we have time on this webinar, but uh, normally I like to do this, this whole thing where you can just locate in your body, like do body scan and see where there's pain or tension or an unwanted emotion. And then you just talk to it. Like you say, okay, where are you exactly in, your, in my body? Let's say you have a lot of anger or grief and or let's say anxiety. <laughs> okay, oh, it's actually in the back of my neck. Okay, and then what color is it? What's the texture? What's the shape? What's the movement? When you ask these questions, it's kind of like the inside out movie. You're allowing it, the emotion to be instead of like as a, as a welcome guest at your door that's like knocking. So it's like normally we're like, we don't want you anxiety. We're going to keep you out. But if you actually let it in and sit at your table, then it, it shuts up more and it, it, it complies. <laughs> and you can actually be with your emotion instead of fixing it, overcoming it, stuffing it down. So as a leader, it's super cool for you to follow, to be, to lead in that. And when you have that kind of energy in that space, you're, it'll open up with your teams as well. The final thing is energize your daily flow. And this is really looking at finding a flow and rhythm in this new reality. Uh, I mentioned obviously more yin time, but there are um, ways to just either distract yourself when you are triggered or get hit with some unexpected, the next thing that you weren't expecting happens, <laughs> uh, that you can instead move. And so there's a lot of moving meditations you can do literally um, that are just like one minute long um, that have proven in very chaotic situations uh, in trauma situations and so forth to, to prove well. And I think later on, we might be able to hopefully address some of those exercises. But if you can't sit still to calm yourself, which a lot of people can't, you can just move, even, even if it's doing push-ups or um, otherwise. Oops, that was my timer. The bread's done. <laughs> yes, thank you so much, Anna. That was wonderful. Love learning about the live model. And Josh, sorry, it's taken us a little bit to get to you. So talk to us about marketing. So many businesses during this time of physical distancing and stay-at-home order, they've had to rely on social media during this time. So what are some tips on next steps that we can do to engage with customers? Yeah, no, I, I appreciate it. I'm stoked that Anna said Inside Out. I had a buddy on the phone last night who brought that up, so I don't think I've heard that movie two times in the 24 hours since the 90s, so that was a really uh, cool moment in time. Um, but I think we've talked a lot. I mean, obviously, we all saw the communication about COVID and what you're doing and all that kind of stuff, and you saw a level of, oh, that's awesome, and kind of builds trust, and then fatigue set in, and people just stopped engaging with it and didn't care as much. And yet we as brands kept messaging all the things we were doing and consumers like under fatigue and they're looking for hope in the next kind of place, right? So I think as leaders right now, it's really important to, as Evan said, shift from what's now is to what the future is and really starting to allow uh, your customers and your network and your, your uh, partners to really start to visualize how you are, are, are being resilient in this moment and what your business is going to look like. Um, and often that comes down to like we talk a lot about social media and engagement, 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 right? And a lot of people, especially because of what I do for a living, are like, why are all these engagements so important and those types of things? <laughs> and I, there's a beautiful book called The Geography of Bliss by a guy named Eric Weiner. Uh, he actually went out and looked at John Howell, who's a, a Canadian economist. He spent a lot of time looking at trust and happiness as a relationship amongst people. And he has this incredible quote that I found a few years ago that I think is just really important for us all to keep in mind. It says, you can't feel properly engaged if you don't trust the people you engage with on a regular basis. Engagement breeds trust. Trust supports engagement. It's a two-way flow. Both parts are critical. And I think so often our messaging right now is around trust me, trust me, trust me. And we're not even being engageable with, right? We're not giving them a reason to engage with us to prove that we can trust them. And so this brings in that kind of building that intentional engagement that will build that trust over time, right? So there's obviously some really clear things you need to look at, obviously repositioning your messaging um, and making sure that you're really kind of shifting from that here and now to what the future is going to look like, uh, the visual identity that you sign with those things. Uh, we just were looking at surveys of teams this morning that Instagram came out and in the last uh, uh, 12 weeks, they said that anything on Instagram that has the color blue to it is getting 20 to 30 percent of the engagement of anything else. And blue is a really kind of healing color, you know, water, that kind of stuff. And so it's interesting to see 
that even the color representation of how you're showing your brand off can go ahead and actually drive more engagement with people. I think it's also really important that you review your customer personas. I'm pretty damn sure that there are going to be customers you had that will no longer be your customers. And that's a really sad day and that's hard to think about, but we need to identify who those people are. And if it's, you know, been a long standing relationship, how do you say goodbye to those people and honor them? But also that how you look at your customer personas about new people that'll be coming into the market that may you never talk to, you don't know who they are, how they tick, that kind of stuff. So I think it's really important that we start looking at our customers again and who they're going to be. Um, obviously, I think it's really important to focus on the values. People want to shop with people they trust. It's an age old saying, right? But talking about your values and who you are, talk about benefits, don't talk about features, and talk about the results that you can drive for somebody right now. Everyone's hurting, everyone's in a lot of pain, people are counting their pennies. And so talking about how you can actually benefit somebody and the, the results and the value you're gonna bring is gonna be you know, vital in this moment to, for brands that are gonna stand out and, and survive through this and actually go ahead and uh, you know, maybe come out of this a little bit higher. I think clearly define the customer brand experience expectations. And I think these are really important things that you start to give people who do have the fear about getting out of Anna and we're talking about what are you doing? What's that client experience gonna look like? What should they expect? And ensuring that whatever you're going ahead of portraying online is exactly what they're going to get when they walk into your establishment. Those things are so important at the end of the day. Um, so I think these are the first kind of steps you got to look at. And I love the old saying, people don't care about what you have to say until you prove you care about them. And is your marketing message actually doing that? And oftentimes we talk about that, talk about the sales meeting, but the marketing department's doing something very different because they're trying to get clicks or trying to get a number of lead forms filled out. <laughs> so we got to really think about that and step into that space. So Josh, question for you. This is really sad, but usually when a company is going through budget cuts, marketing can be the first place that uh, the cuts are made. So during this time, what are some things that we can do if that has happened and you have little to no marketing budget, what would you recommend for someone with their marketing efforts? I mean, this moment and you know, I've, so I'm going to say something that it might be a little bit controversial, to people, but you need to really look at your messaging and your marketing to what is actually touching your customer base. Um, you know, people aren't watching traditional television right now. Your television advertising is not doing anything for you. People aren't stuck in cars for 45 minutes. Your radio advertising is not doing anything for you. People are in social media. They're reading their emails, that kind of stuff. So if it's on the mobile device and it's that kind of stuff, really focus on those efforts and build your strategy around those pieces and get really efficient about what kind of marketing you're doing. Um, I think the good news for brands is that, you know, with social, you don't have to post every day. You don't have to post 10 times a day. <laughs> Posting two or three times a week is absolutely appropriate for a small or medium sized business. If you put a little bit of boost behind those posts, you know, 10, 20 bucks will go a really long way. But get really nimble in that. And think about that. And the integration between your email marketing and your social media now is so tight um, that it can really go ahead and accelerate your customer funnel because you can create those additional engagements with that customer and accelerate their path through your, your, your buying funnel, if you will, at the end of the day. So really kind of thinking about those things and really taking a very hard look at your marketing and remembering that social media is the most transformative communication thing that's happened to the human species since the telephone, for God's sakes. I mean, we are in a totally different space now because of what social media can do. Um, and so that brings me to leveraging engagement for revenue. We also talk about, you know, I get people all the time, like, what is life worth and that kind of stuff. And so I think that the new normal, as Evan kind of showed us, graphs going to have a ramp period, obviously, that we're going to be going through. I think it's really important right now not to be hitting people with buy messages, those types of things. But first and foremost, make sure like today now your website is your storefront. Even if you're an event, even if you're an attraction, your website is your storefront. <laughs> and that better be top notch, it better work, it better be easy on mobile, it better be fast, all that kind of stuff. And then making sure that your pixels are integrated in a way so that all the traffic you drive right now, all the engagements, the relationships you build right now, you can retarget over the next 90, 120 to six months, right? At the end of the day. Uh, focusing on giving to gain. Um, Emily and I were talking earlier, I know some people in here in the hospitality industry, one thing that I've seen that's a really cool trend is that hospitality company now are doing these beautiful hero images of their properties or of their golf holes or of their, you know, Disney's done a ton of stuff with their different Pixar cartoons. And they're offering these up as free backgrounds for people because they're using them in Zoom settings and things like that. I know we're on GoToMeeting today, so obviously see my beautiful green screen behind me. Uh, but at the end of the day, that's a really cool way of creating conversations about places people have been and things that they've done. So thinking about using some of that, but that's a giving thing that actually creates 
more awareness and more understanding of what you guys do or well i had no idea that was even a place uh, third people have time uh, for the first time in my career over 20 years there's an excess of time we've been dealing for the since i started project bionic in this time star world people want to give you three and a half seconds to watch a video People are consuming long form content more than they have over the last eight weeks. You're seeing people go back into reading long books. They're seeing people checking out books. Book sales are up. People are looking at long form on, on the New York Times right now. People have time right now. So help them with how to spend it. Tell them what to do with it. Help them with their kids and what they're doing at home. Think about how you can go ahead and integrate your brand into that time to give them something because that would be one of the most memorable things they can think about as they go forward is, um, and we come out of this. Uh, fourth is build that great feedback loop with rewards, um, making sure that you're listening. If there's anything that you should be retooling, what do you think we should be doing? You know, pulling your customers, understanding what they're saying, understanding what they want from you in leadership, and making sure that when you find those nuggets that you thank them for and you make those changes. And as I've always said, if you've heard me speak, the coolest part about the social space is that you can listen. You can listen to what your customers are saying. You can listen to what your competitors are saying. You can listen to what your partners and your community are saying. If you don't do anything else today, Get out there and just begin to listen. Um, you know, there's been, a, you know, several Facebook groups I've been involved with, and I haven't necessarily posted a bunch about some of the business stuff, but I've done a ton of listening to the pain and the issues that other business leaders are going through and understanding how we at Project Biotic can step into the space and help support those business owners with those situations or how we can bring a creative piece to the puzzle that they might not even know is there. Um, if you can listen and really get into listening to your community, I think there's a lot of wisdom to be gained right now that will really show the path forward. Um, so continue to apply the process and the results will come um, as, as we continue to move forward. Perfect. And I know with customers, you know, sometimes people just want to be heard. So listening is so important. Thank you so much, Josh. So we've heard Evan talk about transforming your business. Anna has talked about supporting your team. We just heard from Josh who's talking about how to engage with your customers. So and I now have a question for whoever wants to take this one, but we've talked about the change going from reacting to recovering. So what specific shift do company leaders actually need to make to grow and rebuild their businesses right now? I'll step in. I, I'm seeing a lot of people that are, are mourning the past and wanting it all to be the way it was. And I think that, you know, as I've been talking to my business friends and talking to my community, I don't think this is the first one of these we're going to see in our lifetime. I think we'll see more of these actually, unfortunately, because of the globalization of our, our world. So I think us as business leaders need to dust ourselves off, mm -hmm. pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and stop worrying about what it used to be and really become innovative and resilient to, in a way to make sure that we're looking at the new future and where we're going. And, and have a Viking burial for the past because that's not the way we're going back to. We need to say goodbye to that and stop holding on to those things because the longer you hold on to those things, the things you're going to miss as you go forward now and the lessons to be learned and what you can do are gonna be really, really important and gonna show which brands really grow and survive this and come out stronger with those brands that, that, that you know, unfortunately might won't probably make it. So I think it really comes to the pace of leaders, pace of the team. If you're not looking forward and you're dealing in a place of fear, which my favorite acronym, false evidence appearing real. If you're dealing in that area, then you're going to go ahead and have a false intention of how you change your business or where you're going with it. And that can be detrimental. So really being careful and thinking about those things and, and thinking about the future and focusing there. I, I would summarize and say, and I agree completely, Josh, the shift towards interdependence and collaboration has been on the, we've been moving in that direction. Um, so new models and how you might show up but the biggest thing is business leaders and the teams that you employ, because you can't say to do this. You can't empower people by just saying, hey, you're empowered or do this. But you have to take take the time, have the humility to go through the process of really finding personal power and strength to weather and be resilient. And so the shift towards uh, looking within and being strong within, but also being very much about the collective as well and finding ways to partner and collaborate with people um, has a lot to know with by it has a lot to do with knowing what your value is and how you fit so the model of win lose or i win you lose or a competitive mindset is not going to serve uh, many companies moving forward so collaboration and interdependence while it takes time and it takes a lot of self-work 
um, that's the path to invest in to really get to the bigger wins down the road. Because as Josh said, it's likely to continue to have uh, ongoing things and there isn't the new normal is still unfolding and you have to create that and you have to do it with others in a collaborative way as much as possible. I would also add, yeah. <laughs> Um, I think there's a huge shift from what I would call yang leadership to yin leadership and to be adaptable to what this new reality is now, period, is to embody yin leadership, which is more of that looking within, listening, listening, asking, listening, asking type of style of leadership, love-based leadership, heart-based leadership, all of that. It's time has come finally, <laughs> as everyone has had all this time to be quiet and alone um, and at home. Uh, so people are now thoughtful about what really matters in their workplace. You know, my husband works downtown in Seattle and commuted four hours a day, you know, and that's just not legit anymore. <laughs> you know, people are going to want to stay remote. They're going to want to do different habits that they've had before. So we have to be nimble and really listen and um, go within to, to have those answers. Great. And we will get to Q&A in just a minute. So if anyone has any questions, please go ahead and start writing them in the chat box. And then until then, Anna, let's stick with you. What happens so we can all get stuck in our own heads sometimes and sometimes our energy and mindset, it's not looking how it should be. It's not where it should be. So what are a couple quick exercises or tips that we can keep in mind to make sure we get unstuck from those times yes um so two things one is just to always ask get really good at asking really cool inquiries that your brain can chew on <laughs> instead of the default uh survival brain questions happening so if you notice you're in a fear you're always you know contracting or expanding or fear or love so if you notice just you have to notice it first so oh i'm worrying again or oh i'm freaking out about something Okay, don't judge it, don't do anything with it. Just ask, what is the opportunity right now? What can I do? Just forward facing like opportunity seeking questions. And then uh, what would my best life look like now? What my favorite question is, what would I be proud of looking back at this time of how I behaved? So it's more legacy based. Okay, the second one is, um, this is a quick one, it's fun. So they did this in El Salvador to like the little children that had these horrible like gang violence, you know, plagued by civil war kind of environments. And uh, it really helped them focus at school. But if you take both fists out, you can put your pinky and thumb like this, and then, switch, try it. <laughs> try if you have, and when you go like this, and oh, you're pretty good, Josh. Like your your mind has to, like really, it goes from out here and distracted into your body. And it helps you focus and feel calmer. So there's this app, one minute app that's free, um, that is run by Body Brain Yoga that was one to help the schools. And it has a bunch of one minute, like little minute moving edit meditations you could do. Interesting, I'll try that after this. <laughs> Thank like, you, Anna. Yes, if we have time, I'll show you one more, but anyway. So, Josh, your company, you've actually seen an increase in business during this time, which is excellent. Have any of you um, heard of any other industries or businesses that have been successful during this time with thriving business models that we can learn from? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that obviously things that could were easy to do remote are been, have been growing, obviously this type of stuff video conferencing has become a huge thing those businesses are growing obviously technology and what's going on there social media digital media is growing from what we're understanding what we're hearing from my peers and things like that um we're even seeing some new consumer products coming online right now we it was really interesting as this kind of set in we had 30 percent of our clients that kind of froze and said i can't do anything and they they really couldn't move we had about 30 percent of our clients that just said hey we're going to bail water and we hope we get to the other side of it and so just let's hold the line and we had another 30 for 30 or 40 percent of our clients that actually saw this as an opportunity and doubled down and so they started spending more they started looking for more uh we have this one company it's a car seat company a baby safety company right and they're seeing like relationships with moms are not changing in this moment so we can continue to move forward with those types of things uh, obviously food brands are seeing a huge uh, especially packaged goods um, because people are cooking at home right now and doing some more of that kind of stuff 
Um, so there's a lot of little things that have gone on that you've seen growth in certain industries. It's not, you know, obviously in the food industry, a lot of people that just only did restaurants have been caught in a bad situation right now. So changing their business models, we're actually working with a lot of those food providers that are actually going straight to consumer now. So they've changed their business model a little bit. Um, so those are really interesting places to kind of look at how this new normal of being, you know, in a stay at, stay at home pe impact is impacting different things. We also know about Netflix and Hulu and all those guys. Um, so it's been interesting to kind of see some of those industries and kind of where they're at um, on top of the alcohol explosion that we've seen. <laughs> two, two interesting trends that just are helpful to think about. Even if you have uh, a business that, that brings people to your location, uh, engaging people with a challenge, uh, challenges uh, as far as like, online marketers or people that do webinars or or things like that are a have been a seem to be on the rise because people have this extra time so challenging people to be a part of a community to actually do something versus attend a webinar or you know so doing something with a collective group so the other trend then is a lot of online learning um master class is kind of an example of one that's really you know well well publicized but shifting to finding ways to educate or, or you know, connect with people. People that were maybe going to do online learning down the road are, are putting their efforts into doing that more now. Um, so just, you know, it, it may not be the, the growth industry, but they definitely are, are some trends of how to connect with people um, to kind of get people back into some, some rhythm and, and reaching out. But learning and challenges seem to be things I've been seeing. Thanks, Evan. There's two exciting models I've seen, um, both as a restaurant and for um, online uh, schools for parents out there. I have an eight-year-old myself, and so uh, that's completely on its head right now. And um, what I see happening is it, there's two models I've seen. One is broker, a broker model where you're pairing up teachers and students and families, and then they can pick their own curriculum and pick their own teachers, which is pretty cool. And then the other one is um, just more homeschool co op kinds of how do you you know, Zoom experiences, but then integrating that augmented reality kinds of uh, activities as well um, from the outside, um, especially for the summer camp industry, uh, which is right now really being recreated. <laughs> and then the other models around um, for restaurants, I have a guy that owns a really large chain in um, LA for Chinese food, and he wants to now be, he's already like dropped the past, and he's now, um, they're putting satellite kitchens everywhere and then doing drops uh with drivers straight to the homes and so i was like isn't it just kind of like a food truck everywhere he's like no it's distinct because how they're going to distribute so anyway it's just a really cool thing to reimagine this is such a cool time to reinvent the future now and have it these are where the biggest companies are going to the next billion dollar companies are being created right now that are going to be adaptable resilient ghost kitchens they are becoming popular all right, so before we move to Q&A, and if our audience doesn't have any questions, we do have a few that were emailed to us during the time of registration. So final question for you three. In your opinion, what is the biggest opportunity we have today? Eben, why don't you start us off? Um, well, as I was saying earlier, it's the opportunity to reinvent our business is called Shift Up. So making changes that you might have wanted to make, but it has a lot to do, and that's what this whole theme of Full Team Ahead it has a lot to do the opportunity to really invest in an authentic way in your in your people and to grow the value and the communications and the the equality within your organization to really get the most out of i think people want to be a part of a purposeful direction so the biggest opportunity is to use this shift in this time to come up with a larger purpose or or strategy that not only serves a need in the market but has a a, a bigger bigger impact that brings people together so Summarizing that again around interdependence, but leadership with the context of uh, making change as well as making money. Anna, how about you? I think the biggest opportunity is how open and willing and forgiving the market is right now. <laughs> I mean, you know, for mistakes, failures, experiments to really reinvent that future that I was just speaking on. So it's it's now it's like the we, as a global community, are all in beta mode <laughs> and able to reinvent a completely different future that wasn't, you know, in a very loud, louder way than you would be in a normal environment or not normal in a pre-COVID environment. Right. 
<laughs> Thank you. And Josh? Yeah, I, I, mean, I, echo, I echo a lot of that. I, you know, I've found this time to be extremely personally motivating and enlightening. I've done a ton of research and just dug into things that I haven't had time to in the past. And as Anna said, COVID has been the great equalizer. We're all in the same starting block right now. And so that innovation, the, the things that you bemoaned in strategy or that you didn't have time to shore up, uh, things you wanted to change in the, your products or how you deliver things, this is the time. I, I challenged Project Bionic and my team and I said, guys, if we don't come out of this stronger and better than what we went into it, then we wasted our time and however long that's going to be. And our team has just buckled down and we've got so much done from onboarding new clients and the growth. But addition to that, even process, we've hired two people completely remote, trained them completely on Zoom, uh, haven't even met them physically, which is a completely wild thing to do compared to where our business was. Um, but watch them getting in and doing things and how the process we've built are really running a smoothly oiled machine right now. Um, and then how we're able to do additional things around strategy for the business or giving back to the community with helping some nonprofits or some special projects that are going on in the city or even nationally that we're helping with um, and volunteering some time. So really, you know, as we have been kind of talked about and talk about purposefully looking at that future and realizing we're all in the same starting gates. And as Anna said a minute ago, the next billion dollar business are being built right now. Um, and there's a lot of people who are not paying attention to that. They will get passed by, unfortunately. Thank you. So right now and again, uh, if you have any questions, please go ahead and type them into the chat box. And in the meantime, Craig from the Association for Genuine Alaska Pollock Producers was asking if you have any specific advice for nonprofits and member-based organizations. Anyone who can jump in for this one? Regarding Our nonprofit. nonprofits. Okay, you go first, Josh. Well, I was just going to say, our nonprofits, obviously, people's budgets are a little bit different right now. Obviously, you can't have the big rubber chicken lunch where you bring people in and do the whole the whole thing, right? Um, so, again, rethinking how they're, how they're working. I've seen a lot of nonprofits who are micro-segmenting now their donors and creating new experiences for them. So, if the bigger-end donors, they might have an experience that they're doing online that they haven't done in the past. They're smaller donors. They might be doing something like a beer tasting or wine tasting that they're doing where there, there's a fee to it. So I think it's a really cool time to reinvent how you think about your fundraising. So I think that's probably where this question is going. And I think that the, because people have time right now, there's an ability to do that. And we're buying so many things online as we think about that or how we deliver stuff. I know that you know one of our nonprofits did a drizzle uh, delivery of, of certain alcohol samples and people are tasting and doing that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of things you can do to reinvent that to still keep your fundraisers and keep your cash going. It won't be just one big event. It might be a bunch of micro events but it allows you to have deeper, more connected conversations with your audience and your supporters um, about the future and kind of where they want to see the organization go as you're hitting this reset right now. Yeah, and so you covered that well. I would just say on the membership side, people do want a sense of belonging, but it's definitely time to re reconnect people to their the, the purpose of your organization or the nonprofit or your, or your association. And to do things like this, like Emily, you know, leading, uh, just a membership organization, you know, having some content or ways to to put put your message and and get out there. Because even if you put something together, you don't have maybe the attendance that you want. You're still actively engaging, and then you can obviously post and make that information available. But people want to stay in touch, but they may be sp spread a little thin. They'll definitely be more challenged as we have this return phase where people are more distracted and just doing what they have to to get back into the into the business mode. So nonprofits help me to have another louder voice, but find ways to be relevant. I'm not sure what all those tips might be, but membership organizations definitely need to continue to have programming and, and engage people uh, to to keep them active as much as possible. Um, and I guess more Zoom related uh, activities for now. Yeah, I'll just add like high touch, high tech, right? For the membership based side of things. Uh, so if people get sick of Zoom, right? What are more surprising uh, treasure hunt, you know, what? different new ways of engaging uh, together online. And then um, from a nonprofit standpoint, locally here, I live out on Kitsap Peninsula. It's, they had the largest um, Kitsap great gift that we've had was right in the middle of like in, in April, early April. Um, so I think it's about reframing messaging as well to touch the hearts of what 
you know, people are really right now focused on what really matters. And so um, if you can reframe as a nonprofit what the story is um, to apply to the times of today that that could um, tug on heartstrings and, and bring in more dollars. Thank you. So we have two more questions that were asked during the registration process, and then we'll try and let everyone go a few minutes early to give their eyes a break. Uh, Stephanie from Salish Sea Expeditions asked how to balance the needs of a workforce that just experienced a collective trauma and productivity. Anna, perhaps you have ways. Can you say that one more time? I missed that yeah. last part. How to balance the needs of a workforce that just experienced a collective trauma and productivity. Any advice there? Great. Um, not great that that happened, but <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, again, as the leader, it's really critical that you do your own inner work and ground your own energy first. And then when you go back out to them, do some collective um, grounding and, and energy work with them. And so whether that's, uh, you know, we, I shared earlier that emotional activity, which is based off of the work of Dr. Peter Levine, which has done a lot of trauma work. Um, over, so it's a, there's a lot of psychosomatic exercises like that, that you can do one minute um, you know, before you start uh, your team meetings, rather than just jump right into business, put some more heart and have people check in and do something physically that can also move them and start to process physically their emotions. Um, will will ground everybody to, okay, we trust each other. Now let's talk about the business. So integrating way more of that um, as a must have versus only during this time if, if they're experiencing the collective. I'd just add that productivity has a lot to do with the values that people have. And so obviously people wanna have a job, so they wanna be productive. But tapping into, as Anna said, some of the why or what might be the collective block or challenge, you know, creating space for that. You don't want to overdo it because there's a certain amount of like not tough love, but just like, OK, get the show on the road. But definitely in a, in the re-engagement process, uh, clarifying values and purpose of the organization, making that really clear, reconnecting to that, because, again, it's about rebuilding trust. And so it's also finding trust in oneself. Some people. You may not have the be have developed the best habits or this has been really tough emotionally and so they're not as motivated and so you got to be sensitive to know that it's going to take a little time for them but provide opportunities as anna said to kind of share that one-on-ones become uh, a really important piece of the puzzle that some people don't didn't have or wasn't consistent but definitely having some of those one-on-one -on -one check-ins to get the motivation and clarity about what the win is and, and the why will definitely boost productivity for individual workers working as a collective. Thank you. And final question, this comes from Sydney uh, with Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Puget Sound and this one. So he's asking about ways to be more interactive virtually. And I know this is it's a great question because so many of us, these in-person meetings that we would have, especially Big Brothers, Big Sisters, you know, it's exactly that. It's away from the computer screen and so, um, for those of us who are now conducting all of those virtually, it can be really tough uh, on your eyes and just being in front of a computer screen. So any advice for Sydney and the rest of us who are looking on for ways to connect? Yes, um, there's so many fun ways. So think of virtual like in person. And uh, so like in my, my son's school, I'm just thinking of Big Brother, Big Sisters, um, we did like a collective picture together. So, you know, one one kid, uh, would say, okay, draw, we all have a piece of paper. One kid draw this thing, like a cat, and everybody draws a cat. And the next person goes and says, draw this, a dog, a dog. And then after each round, we show the pictures. And at the end, it was actually going away party for one of them. Um, we mailed the actual pictures to them. So that's like an example of like this interactive experience that you're collectively creating something. And then you have a physical, tangible thing that you can then uh, send out. Other examples uh, is, bringing in more of the creative mediums of music and dance <laughs> or yoga into your meetings. Uh, people, if you're actually physically moving on the screen, then it's not a problem that you're on the screen. <laughs> uh, it's actually something fun and energizing. So it's so just like being in the box, break the box, you know, get outside literally and or and literally, right? You can also relocate the, the thing. So in our, our business group meetings that we have, we're now like doing these weird stimulus like uh, not weird, but we had um, 
change your background day so that could be either virtual or like going outside right so everyone can now see different parts of your life that you wouldn't normally see or we had uh, other people from the family introduce you because now you have all the access to your your family members so integrate them rather than try to shut them out so you can have a focused time um, just really show the human aspects of what's possible so the the one thing as as we're uh, trying to set new rituals of belonging and connecting there may not be that frequent that a company does uh, like team lunches but definitely start with this process of, of some shared things uh, actually one of the things that Anna's been doing with some with one of her groups that I'm a part of is having lunch or or some kind of shared time together where we're we're time that we'd normally be maybe doing something uh, that isn't work related but but finding in the in the day to to do something that's just like having you know everyone's talking but it's a little more casual over lunch or over or maybe there's a gift card or some type of delivery and it's pizza to that they get to use and so they could they could use that if they want but it's not about just giving things away to make people feel feel special but it's finding some of those things that you you're commonly doing um and and creating a little bit more of a ritual around it but as far as like jazzing up meetings and i kind of said it i mean there's a lot of opportunities that you could you could do um but it, is, it isn't necessarily a time where it's all fun and games but it can be really confining to feel like you're in front of a screen and you're and you're just pinned there um so it's important to to try to make it interactive and try to find ways where there are blocks in the group that the energy doesn't get kind of disjointed or people aren't talking because it can be very awkward as well so people don't want to be a part of them because meetings fewer meetings but more impactful meetings would make people want to be a part of them so thank you josh any final words as we prepare to close yeah i have so much to say but i'll just keep it concise i think that you know I've been astonished by how many people have forgotten about their one-on-ones and even doing team settings and meetings. Uh, we're trying to do a team setting meeting with the entire staff at least once a week or at least every other week. Um, I've been holding one-on-ones with every single team member in the organization. I can't recommend that enough. Um, but I think to this question, I think the one issue we're having is a lot of us are um, have not normalized silence on on video chat we feel like because we can see the other person we need to have these extended moments of entertainment and check this out and watch this thing and so um i've been working a lot with donnie donald watts and their basketball camp right talk about transformation they've gone through um and what we've talked a lot about is some of the videos and some of the content you can put out there but then in addition to that just taking your mobile device and whether it's duo whether it's facetime or whatever it is Doing the one-on-one -on -one stuff and connecting, um, I've seen where like just getting out together and wearing a headset and just hiking and just the person's hiking a totally different trail <laughs> and you're just showing each other what you're seeing, right? Those types of moments. Uh, sitting and doing something different together, like art or something like that where you're in a different spot, but doing the, you know, there's the group stuff and then there's the one-on-one -on -one stuff. But I think if we can normalize a little bit the ability to be silent at times, like you would with a really good friend, um, is really important. And so I think the more we get to this, the, we are really setting as leaders right now, the social norms of what happens in this virtual world that we're in right now. And I think we need to make it okay for that, that pause, that abbreviated silence for people to think and grind on things. And I think that if you think about that, I think you can add a lot more of the touch when it comes to your team and critical team members, because people do have more time right now and they need that connection. And so by actually connecting and creating more events and taking up a little bit more of their time, you actually am seeing more production out of my team and what they're putting out because they're motivated, they're aligned with the goal, they understand the mission, and they clearly understand what winning looks like, and that's been reinforced in everything we've done. Um, but I think, yeah, think about the, the, the group, but also think about the one-on-one -on -one stuff you can do this way, getting out and walking and just being in a different place, but sharing experiences as you're walking and cool things you're seeing and going back and forth. I've done I Spy a couple times with some of my team members I'm walking, and they'll we'll talk about a color and then we'll show each other what we see in our neighborhoods or things like that. So there's some really fun things you can do there, but we're creating new social norms right now through this. And let's think about how we can leverage all these different pieces to be think uniquely and differently than we're doing right now. Excellent. Well, it is time for us to close right now. So thank you, Josh, Anna, Evan. You're fantastic. Thank you to everyone who attended today. You will receive a follow-up email with a survey. We'd greatly appreciate it if you fill it out. It only takes a quick minute and we would really um, like to see your feedback. We will also include the guide uh, that Evan and team have put together to help you develop your own grow forward plan. As we saw, there's a lot of information in those slides, so that is coming your way. And then also you have Evan, Anna, and Josh's contact information in front of you. 
But for now, uh, we will come to a close. More information will be on our website, wtcseattle.com soon with our next programs. And in the meantime, stay safe, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Bye.